Okay, I'm making this video because time is running out. This is the end of days. Jesus is coming soon, but there's going to be a, horrif a horrific experience getting from here to the end. And just like Jesus says, he who endures to the end will be saved. So you need to understand that there's certain endurance that's going to have to come forth out of your soul, out of your heart. And like the Bible says in Revelation chapter 14, this calls for patient endurance on the part of those who remain faithful to Jesus. The mark of the beast is going to come out. There's going to be crazy stuff happening and your heart has to be right with God. Okay, so I've come up with some scriptures that I believe that are for the end times. One, the day of the Lord. Amos says, in the book of Amos, it says, Seek God and live. Seek God and live. In Acts chapter 2 and in the book of Joel, it talks of the day of the Lord when the skies turn to darkness and the, and the moon to blood and the stars fall from the sky. Jesus even spoke of that in, in Matthew 24. And it says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it says in that day. And the reason it says that is because when disaster strikes, when all hell breaks loose, when persecution comes, the Bible says many fall away. And the Bible says that that day, the end will not come until at first there be a great falling away. All these Christians you see, all these Christians, five are wise and five are foolish. Go to church, take a good look around. Five are wise and five are foolish. Half of those people in your church are probably going to fall. Now, I'm not judging anyone. I'm just saying what the Bible says. So whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. You know, there's a lot of Christians that when persecution comes, they quickly fall away and they're not even going to call on the name of Jesus. They haven't even read their Bible enough to know that. But you, now you know, get on your knees and start calling out to God. The Bible says, ask, seek, and knock. For the end times, you need to start praying now about the day of your death and how you want to go. You need to decide now. Do you want a martyr's crown? You need to start praying about that. Do you want to die in a flash? In a flash? In the book of Amos, when it talks of the day of the Lord, it says with a flash, the fortified city is destroyed. Do you want to be in the middle of that fortified city right at ground zero when the flash happens? And just be taken out in the quickest, easiest way? You need to be praying about that. Do you want to have to endure through the mark of the beast? The Bible says that after the gospel is preached throughout the world, then the day, the hour of God's judgment will come. This is all in Revelation chapter 14. The hour of God's judgment will come. Babylon the Great falls. And right after that, the mark of the beast comes out. Do you want to have to live through and endure the mark of the beast? If so, you better be praying about that. Now. You say, well, I don't know. I thought we were supposed to be raptured. No, you didn't think we were supposed to be raptured. You hope you're going to be raptured before all that stuff happens. But that's not what the Bible says. After the harvest of the earth in Revelation chapter 14, verse 14, after that there is no there is no second chance. There is no left behind where a bunch of people get saved. The only people left on the earth are the wicked, vile people who shed the blood of God's prophets and saints. And it's the wrath of God being poured out on the earth. And no Christian is going to be, nobody who serves God is going to be in the earth Save the two witnesses. I think, if I understand the Bible, either the 144,000 are going to be left and they're going to be walking in such power of God that they don't even care. They just walk right up to, you know, they just call on God. And I believe it's the two witnesses. Two men are left on earth who are serving God. 
And they're just going to, you know what they're going to do? They're going to preach against Islam. They're going to preach against evil. They're going to preach against wickedness. They're going to preach against lukewarm. And they won't even care. They'll be like, try to kill me. Go ahead. And when they, and when they try to get them, nothing can harm them. Until then they're handed over at the very end of the very end. They're handed over and God raises them from the dead right before everybody. Just the same way Jesus, he did for Jesus. But here's the end time scriptures, the things you need to know. The book of Job. He was in a situation where he lost everything and yet he still praised God. You need to be ready to do that when all hell breaks loose and 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 whether it's a disaster, whether it's a tsunami, whether it's a tidal wave, whether it's an asteroid, whether it's nuclear war, it doesn't matter. When everything that you own is swept away and taken from you and all your loved ones are dead and the only people still living are telling you, why don't you just curse God and turn on God? You need to be ready to yet praise God. So here's here it is. I'm going to break it down. You need to be praying about the day of your your conversion to eternity you need to be praying about do you want a martyr's crown do you want to endure the mark of the beast and be one of those who have come out of not the tribulation but the great tribulation that those are two different things there's tribulation which we all experience in this world then there's the great tribulation which jesus spoke of if those days had not he said it'd be it'll be the worst time ever in history from before and never again to be that bad ever again. He said that all in Matthew 24. He said if those days had not been cut short, no flesh would survive. So he's talking about the most horring, horrific time ever in history is the very end of the end days after the mark of the beast comes out. And so some of you are saying, well, we believe the rapture is going to happen first. No, you don't. You hope the rapture is going to happen first. You're hoping for that, but you need to be prepared because the Bible doesn't say anything about a rapture after the mark of the beast. In Revelation, listen, let me explain it to you. Revelation chapter 14, 15, and 16 is a very clear timeline that starts with the gospel being preached to every nation, language, tribe, and people. Once that's complete, it goes right on and says, then the hour of God's judgment comes. There's no rapture there. It doesn't say anything about a rapture. And then it says Babylon the Great Falls. Still no rapture. Then it says, you know what it says next? It says the mark of the beast comes out. And, and anybody who takes that mark of the beast will be given a full cup of the wrath of God. That's what happens next. It doesn't say no rapture happens. You know what happens next? Then God says this calls for patient endurance on the part of those who serve God and remain faithful to Jesus. It doesn't say this calls for just sitting back and waiting for the rapture. You know what happens next? Then God says, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. You know what happens next? A bunch of Christians die and are put to death for their faith. You know what happens next? Then the harvest of the earth, a.k.a. the rapture. And if you look at the where the actual word rapture is used, it says... Those, we who are alive and remain will be, it says the dead in Christ will rise first and we who are alive and remain will be caught up in the air. If you put that in the context of, of the harvest of the earth, Revelation chapter 14, 14, and you put that right in between there, you'll see that what he's saying is we who are alive, in other words, a bunch have been put to death, but we who are still alive and remain, will be changed in the twinkling of an eye and captured up. That's the harvest of the earth. The mark of the beast comes out first. You need to be praying about it. Now, I'm serious. So many lukewarm Christians, you need to share this video with all your friends and say, Is this guy true? What's he saying? You need to get your Bible out and read Matthew 24, Matthew 14. I mean, Matthew 13, Matthew, or, or book of Revelation, chapter 14, starting at verse 6, all the way down to chapter 15 and 16. 
Okay, and watch my other videos to find out more about what I'm talking about. It's very clear. These teachers who are teaching lies about a rapture and the movie Left Behind has just left a bunch of people. Since when has Hollywood ever produced a movie that, that is even anywhere close to being accurate about God? So it should be no surprise that the whole left behind fantasy, fable, I'm just saying, it's time to get your heart right with God. You need to be praying about your day of death, how you want to go. And the Bible says, for him who's destined to captivity, to captivity. And to him who's destined to die by the sword, to die by the sword. That talks about after the mark of the beast comes out. So what I'm saying is no more time for this mamby-pamby, lukewarm, wussy Christianity. First of all, those who really serve God, I'll tell you straight up, I want my martyr's crown. So don't stand here and tell me where I'm going to be raptured up before I get my martyr's crown. And if the Lord spoke to me 15 years ago and said, I'm going to be put to death for my faith, and right here in the United States, right here in this country, oh, that could never happen. You know what else could never happen? World War I. Hiroshima Nagasaki could never happen. If it wasn't for one man, Einstein, coming up with all those theories of relativity, none of that could have ever happened. I'm just saying, don't stand here and do, oh, I don't know. You probably thought your wife could never cheat on you, and then you found out she was. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, uh, well, how'd you know, anyway? Because God just read your mail. I just had a conversation with you by the Holy Ghost. And see, somebody's watching this thinking, who's he talking to? If I'm not talking to you, there's somebody going to watch this, and it's going to be like God just spoke to them straight through YouTube. And when they click back to watch it again, it'll be a little bit different. They'll be like, man, it just felt really powerful that one time he did it. I'm just saying. Somebody else watching this might be like, That happened to me. And they know. And there's no doubt. Oh yeah, he's speaking by the Holy Ghost. I know when somebody's talking by the power of the Holy Spirit and that Jesus is the Lord and the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And what's the point of this video? Seek God and live. Worship God and put Him first. Jesus is the Lord. Time is running out. Whosoever shall call on the... No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says in that day. And, Jesus, and, and, and the prophet had just said there will be blood, fire, billows of smoke. The sky will be turned to darkness and the moon to, to blood. In that day, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. In other words, if there's no persecution, many will call on the name of the Lord. But when persecution comes, they quickly fall away. When trials and tribulations and hardship comes, they just turn and run. Those who wait on the Lord, God will renew their strength. What's that mean? That means when you're sitting in a jail cell and they're eating pizza and you haven't eaten in five days, and you're thirsty, and you're hungry, and you see the, the prison guards with pizza, and they say, anybody who wants to take this and get the procedure done on your right hand, we're going to give you three pieces of pizza, and we'll make sure you're home by 7 o'clock tonight. And you see four or five guys in your cell who are Christians. You guys were just talking about God and praying. And one of them says, The bachelor's on tonight, too. Seems... It's the season finale. I can't wait to see that show. I'll be watching it all season. Plus, I'd really like to have me some of that pizza. And next thing you know, four or five guys walk out of the cell getting that mark of the beast. And what do you need to do? You need to call on the name of the Lord. Start calling out to God. Start calling out to Jesus. And then kneel down and get quiet and just wait on God. And wait for the power of the Holy Spirit to infill you. But if you're a foolish virgin, it's not going to fill you. It's not going to be there. You're going to run out. I'm giving you a real practical scenario that's real. 
It may not be exact. I'm sure the bachelor is not really going to be running. I was using that as an analogy or a parable. But similar to that. Well, shoot, the game's on. It's the final four. He said I could be home by seven. I sure wonder if North Carolina was going to win that final four. I had me some money on it, too. I'm just saying, there probably won't be a Final Four at that time, but it'll be something else. Sure, sure wish I could get me a Whopper with cheese. I'm just saying, it could be anything. I know McDonald's has the best fries. I'm going to go get me some. I'm just saying, you're going to have to wait on the Lord. You're going to have to seek God. You're going to have to have that power of the Holy Spirit, of the wise virgin. Just The Bible says that five were wise and five were foolish. The foolish ones didn't have enough oil in their vessel, and they started to go out. And that, those are the ones who are going to be like, I'll take it. Just let me out of this prison cell. Let me have some of that pizza, and I'll be home by seven. I'll do it. Because they ran out of the power of God. They didn't have that upwelling in them. But for those who seek God and put God first and worship God and serve God, and if you get prayed up right now and you start giving your offerings and paying your tithes, and don't ask God for anything. Just surrender it at the feet of Jesus and say, if God says, what do you want? You say, God, I just want to serve you. God asks me what I want all the time. He says, tell me anything you want. And I think about it, I'll be like, Lord, I just want to serve you. I want to obey you. I want to worship you. I want you to be first in my life. That's it. And I know if I, well, I want me a brand new Mercedes Benz. Well, guess what? You're also going to get a brand new $500 a month payment. I'm just saying, then you're in bondage for five years. Or more than that, seven, eight hundred dollars for a brand new Mercedes? $1,000 a month. More than that. 1500 a month, practically a mortgage for some people. It's only five years, you know, 60 months on a $60,000 car without interest is 1000 a month. So you're looking at probably two grand a month. <laughs> anyway, point, I, point I'm trying to make is put God first, seek God and live, whosoever shall call on them in that day, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And share these videos with people. If you have loved ones and you know in your heart that time is running out, you need to get together and have a Bible study on everything I'm talking about. Don't just take, don't just watch Perry Stone and take him at his word. See, that's why, that's why some of these preachers are so ridiculous. They make you think that you have to have some sort of degree to understand the Bible and he talks about when he talks about the rapture he's talking about wheat and barley and grapes and all this crazy stuff and and oh what they used to do is they throw it up in the air and the wind would blow it by and then the other one they use tribulum on it and it's like are you kidding me man it's right there really clear his whole teaching all that teaching and he comes to the wrong conclusion in the end and the conclusion the real conclusion from the Bible is the mark of the beast comes out first then, later, after great trial and tribulation, the mark of the beast comes out. I mean, I'm sorry, the harvest of the earth, which is the rapture. I mean, how can you tell me that they're seeking God and getting their information from the Holy Ghost when, listen, it's clear in the Bible. As far as I'm concerned, throw out all the other teaching as well. I'm just saying, I just can't stand that stuff. It's like they act like they know, and it's very clear. Where are they getting this idea of a rapture? It's called the harvest of the earth, and it's Revelation chapter 14, verse 14, and it happens simultaneously with another harvest where the weeds among the wheat are bundled up and thrown into the fire. Anyway, I go over all that in another video. The point of this video is you need to be praying about your, the day of your death. How do you want to go? How do you want your life to end for God. And also, these scriptures that you need to know about being like Job, praising God when everything's swept away, and calling on the name of the Lord, and wait on the Lord when you're in the middle of the strongest trial and the biggest temptation to take that mark of the beast just so you can get 
a little bit of food. Remember, it's Isu's bowl of soup. And the foolish virgins, how they didn't have enough power. They didn't have enough oil. You know what the foolish virgins were doing? When they gave, they were asking God for things of this world. Okay, I'm going to pay my tithe, Lord, but I want me a brand new car and I want a nice house. And God give them a new car and a nice house, but no in power of the Holy Ghost. Meanwhile, the wise virgins were like, Lord, I give this to you. You tell me what I should ask for. If not, God, just let me have let me have more of you and let me serve you. That's what you should be asking for. But Creflo Dollar, he's how is his how is his sixty five million dollar jet and all his expensive stuff going to save him from the mark of the beast? And when he's sitting there in prison, and they say, Mister Creflo, come here, please sit down. We want to talk to you. You're sitting here in jail, but we know you have a, a really nice home to go home to. We also know you got several cars, and all you got to do is take this little procedure done in your right hand, and uh, you'll be home. You know, you'll be home within forty-five minutes, and it'll be back to life as usual. You'll be able to sleep in your own bed tonight. You'll be able to come right out of that, right out of that cell. We'll change your clothes, get you out of those prison clothes, and you'll be home by. You know, within within 45 minutes. And you'll be able to drive your car and go get yourself... Go. I mean, where do you want to go yet, out to eat tonight? You still... You probably got plenty of money in the bank. You got plenty of investments. It's all right there for you. Meanwhile, Creflo's in a jail cell going, I'm starving. I haven't eaten, for, eaten in four days. They're not giving us enough water. And he'll get so weak because he never believed God for things in the Holy Ghost. He was always demanding worldly stuff, and he taught many to do so. So, I mean, you might get a message to him and say, watch the end of this video. And he'll probably go, huh, I believe God for whatever I want. And when he does that, just remember my other video that I said to Creflo Dollar. How the Bible says that they get that, that they have a continual lust for more. In other words, you give Creflo Dollar everything he wants, he's going to want more. Then you give him that jet, guess what he's going to want? He's going to want more. He's going to want... You give him a $65 million jet, two years from now he's going to be believing God for, for his own space shuttle so he can go to Mars. And once he colonizes Mars, he's basically going to say, God, I want the sun, I want the moon, I want the stars. And eventually, he's, and if God gives him that, he's eventually going to say, I want your throne, God. And that's what he's doing. That's the, that's the stair step and the direction that he's going. And the Bible is true. They fall into the same trap and snare as the devil himself. I don't even know why I went off on that. And listen, the Bible names names. Don't get mad at me. I'm telling you straight out, and I'm not afraid of anything, and I know that God is on my side, and Jesus is my Lord, and I'm speaking by the Holy Ghost. And I know I'll stand before God and not get, you know what? I'm going to get a reward for speaking the truth, not, not get any type of judgment. I know my God. I was just in his presence. I was just with him, and he said, make another video and tell people about the scriptures they need to know and that they need to pray about their, their day, their last day on this earth and how they want to go just saying i'm just doing what god told me to do am i asking for money was there advertisements on this video mm -mm, god blesses me i'm not worried about that and when i give i just lay it down at the feet of jesus say god i give this to you if god says give give a motorcycle i give a motorcycle i don't say oh, i want me a brand new one then fine i'll give my 2001 Oh, fine, I'll give my 2006 CRF 450, but I want a 2015. I want a brand new one. How is that serving God? No, I just lay it down. God, you can take it, Lord, please. I give it to you. Your will be done. Every time I give a motorcycle, I have a really vivid dream of flying. And when I mean flying, I mean flying like Superman, flying like a, um, like a, um, like a hummingbird, just <laughs> over hills, through valleys, just... And then at one point in one of my dreams, I just turned on the power and I just blasted so fast. It was like unbelievable. Every time I give a motorcycle. 
And I'm not saying that to boast or anything. I'm just saying God blesses me and I can do whatever God wants me to do. And I don't have to make demands on God. That's what I'm saying. He makes demands on me. Listen, you don't order the angels of God around. They have already retained their abode in heaven. You can, by the Holy Ghost, order the devil around because he's been cast down. But you are not in authority over the angels. Well, that's not what the Bible Yes, it is. It says that God made man a little bit lower than the angels. Read your Bible. Well, I have a different understanding of that, and I don't get it. <laughs> you're not going to get it then. You're never going to get it. And you're not even going to make it to heaven if that's your attitude. If you think you're going to get to heaven and suddenly start ordering Michael and Gabriel around, these are guys who've been around a lot longer and they know why the devil originally fell. They were there. And they were able to retain their abode. That's pretty much the same thing as being saved more than saved. I'm just saying. We'll rule and reign with him and God will determine each person's individual place based on how they live. Here on this earth. Matter of fact, we're just a replacement for all the spirits that were cast down. We're just a replacement. And if, if one thing can be replaced once, it can be replaced again. I'm just saying, you ain't all that. Some Christians, we think, we think we're all that. We're like some sort of favor to God. No. God is a favor to you. You don't order God around. God's supposed to order you around. You don't order God's angels around. God's angels are supposed to come from God and tell you what you're supposed to do. I'm just saying. False teaching out there. Learn to humble yourself and submit to God's will. 